Welcome back to Show and Tell. I had to do a little bit of digging for this show and tell. And this show and tell comes from my buddy Ken. Uh, Ken had suggested that um, I show some older paintings that show a, a moment of progression. And uh, hopefully this will inspire you guys as you go. Um, so this painting is one of the older ones. I did this in 1998. Uh, and it is the first painting that I moved away from adhesive masks. So if you're not familiar with airbrushing, one of the one of the kind of normal ways to do things is if you want one area to be different than another as far as like the, if I'm painting the, the people in this this painting, what I would have normally done is mask off these paint these people, cut them out. And I would do that. I don't have any anymore, but um, there's a product called Frisket. And it's like this, it's just transfer tape, but it's basically the same idea. This is clear, you just kind of lay it down and then you cut it out, cut it out where you want, you want to protect. And then you're left with a mask over everything. So it's great stuff, but what it does is it leaves a very hard edge, a very sharp, sharp edge. So there's a place for it, but if you're learning, like in this one, this painting was done a year before this, this was 1997. I did exactly that. I masked off the airplane with this frisket and then I painted the background, which is fine in this instance. It's not as glaring as some of them, but what happens is you get a very cut and pasted type of look. It looks like the plane was just stuck on. It's like a sticker. Both of them were done the same way. Um, so with the airbrush, that's kind of a trap because you have this really soft, the way the airbrush puts stuff down is really soft and flowing. And then you have this really hard edge and tight, hard, clean edge against where the masking is. So it's really, it glares. So that's, that, it's usually a giveaway that the airbrush has been used if that, that division is there. So a big jump for me was with this painting here and a sheet, <clears throat> name of the painting is a sheet. And um, what I decided to do with this one is I decided to use no adhesive masks at all on this. I was going to use freehand shields, little shields that are cut out to block areas off, but I didn't allow myself to use any any mask. It would have helped out a lot in instances like the numbers and letters, which I'll show you in a second. Um, but I, I wanted to try to really push things and 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 just use these freehand shields. Now the, the neat thing about the shields, and this is one that I had made way, way back, uh, and they, they have them commercially available too. This one's by Art Tool, which is one of the biggest manufacturers of these shields. What these do <clears throat> is you can hold them over an area that you want to protect, and then you can spray. And it does essentially the same thing with one exception. Because these have no adhesive on them, they can move a little bit. So as you're spraying, some tiny, tiny bit of paint is getting underneath them and giving it kind of a more natural soft edge. It's not as tight. I mean, you can you can really get a tight edge with these if you hold them down and spray, but it's that flexibility of, of just being able to kind of move these things around and capture a, an edge where you need it. This was a major, major jump for me on this painting. Uh, it opened up all kinds of things. All of a sudden I did this painting and now this painting didn't look all cut and pasted like it would have a year ago. Um, so that's it really, really, really made a big difference. So I always look back at this painting and I remember that huge jump. And that came from a challenge, from a problem that I was having. And that's usually where your growth is. So if you're in a rut and you, you know you just really can't get to the next step, you know, where you know your art needs to be. You see your art being in a different place than it is now, but it's stuck. Look to where you're having the most problems and attack those problems. If it seems like it's overwhelming, then pick one, just one. And that's what this one was. Uh, I wanted to eliminate the need to always use that frisket if I needed a hard edge. Uh, and it's funny, I look at this painting now and, and it's... Uh, Gosh, even, I mean, I know it's it's been a few years since I did it, but I'll zoom you guys in so you can see some details. Now, you know, kind of that's what I do now, you know, really small stuff. But I look at the details in this, and, you know, you could still see all the pencil lines and the areas like the chain and everything. They're, they're just kind of roughly painted in. They're not really sharp. I mean, you think about what I do now, and, you know, razor blade's about this big. 
So what I can fit in detail now is, is amazingly different than what I could do back then. So that's the other thing too, you know, save all your work because it, it changes, you know. I mean, the vision was there. Certainly, it's still one of my favorite paintings. This one was great. I was fortunate enough to run into this pilot. Actually, I didn't. This painting was in a show. He saw it and knew it was him because he was... You, my brother-in-law is a, a Navy pilot. So that particular pilot, the other pilot, was, was stationed where this painting was hanging. So he saw it. And then I, a little bit later, I got him to sign it, So which is really, really cool. So that worked out. That worked out really neat. And, you know, there are, it's funny, you look at your old stuff and there's always mistakes. Stars and bars are horribly wrong, <laughs> which is, that's, that's a travesty. That shouldn't happen. And the other thing is I didn't know how to, the, the, the lettering took forever because normally what I would do is cut a mask for that. But I didn't. I wanted to use all the shields. So by using the shields, and I'll zoom in here so you can see it, I didn't quite know how to keep the paint out of the interior of the letters so all the interiors of the letters are all painted in um so you know it's just little things like that you know i look at now and i laugh like you know that i actually let that go uh but it gives you a good idea now another quick note before i end this show and tell i did this painting in 1998 and i bought my first airbrush 10 years before 88 <clears throat> so I think about the progression and the education that you guys have available to you now. Like I see the these events like the Rendezvous and uh, the Art Circus and uh, the Takeover. And I'm amazed at what someone can learn with an airbrush, even in a week. So I didn't have that. I kind of had to scrap you know, information from books or, or you know, the few magazines that were out there. And uh, it took a long time to learn. Uh, I'm amazed at what, what you're able to get done now. So if you are having problems, all I can say is grab one of those classes. I think about this shouldn't have taken 10 years for me to get to. You know, a lot of the things I shouldn't have been, I shouldn't have been working on freehand shields for the first time. 10 years after I started airbrushing, you know, so the progression and the speed that you can learn now is, is, is amazing. So take advantage of, of the artists that are out there. Don't reinvent the wheel, you know, get your education, talk to people who, who have gone through it and um, it'll save yourself a lot of, a lot of aggravation. All right. So there is your show and tell. So this is Steve Leahy. This is a sheet and, uh, Hope you guys have a great week and I will catch you on the next one.